Does anybody out there think that in terms of uh, healthy eating, a lunch of uh, avocado, tomato sandwich, or whole grain sourdough bread washed down with unsweetened green tea doesn't trump a hot dog, french fries, and a soft drink? I don't think so. Uh, over the last few years, we have seen a slew of studies, and of course the media has picked these up, linking the consumption of so-called ultra-processed foods uh, to poor health outcomes. So what are the biggest health concerns we have today? Uh, they are cardiovascular disease, cancer, and dementia. Unfortunately, studies have linked each of these to a diet high in ultra-processed foods. Why do I say unfortunately? Because in Canada, about 48% of our calories come from ultra-processed foods. It's bad, but not quite as bad as Britain and the U.S., where it's about 58%. So, what are these nefarious ultra-processed foods? There's no simple definition, but in general, these are foods that are produced by large multinational companies that come in bottles or packages, and you'll find them in the inside aisles of the uh, grocery store. Uh, most meals and fast food outlets would also fall into this category. Now, in terms of specific examples, oh, mass-produced packaged breads and cookies and sweetened cereals and instant soups and sauces, pastries, margarine, soft drinks, uh, chicken nuggets, uh, hot dogs, of course, sausages, and spam. Uh, these foods are high in fat, they're high in salt, and they tend to contain various uh, additives as well. They're cheaper than fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, and generally they're very convenient because they require little or no preparation. Now for the studies. A French study known as the NutriNet Santé trial followed some 105,000 participants over five years. These people regularly filled out questionnaires and had their health status monitored. There was an increased risk of cardiovascular disease of around 13% in the group with the highest intake of processed foods compared with the lowest. <clears throat> then we hop over to Britain and the Biobank study, and that looked at cancer incidence in 200,000 middle-aged people over 10 years, and found that an increased consumption of ultra-processed foods was associated with an increased rate of cancer overall. Most significant, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, increased by 16 and 30 percent. And then a Brazilian study followed 10,000 subjects over 10 years, and these people uh, underwent periodic uh, evaluation of their cognitive function. And there was a decline if more than 20% of the calories came from ultra-processed foods. What does that mean? Well, in a 2,000 calorie per day diet, it means more than 400 calories. Consider what a typical meal at McDonald's is. It's over 500 calories. Executive functioning, that's the ability to process information and make decisions, that was the most affected. <clears throat> now, it needs to be pointed out that these studies are observational and cannot prove a cause-and-effect relationship. It may be, for example, that the problem isn't what people are eating, it's what they are not eating. Ultra-processed food consumers tend to eat few fruits and vegetables that protect against disease. <clears throat> Nevertheless, all the studies point in the same direction. They all associate ultra-processed foods with health problems, and no studies show that a diet of ultra-processed foods is healthy. One study by researchers at the University of Michigan even tried to quantify the risk of individual processed foods in terms of how many minutes of life would be lost from a single serving, and concluded that a hot dog would cost you about 35 minutes of life. This is nonsense. One hot dog does not have an impact on longevity, which is determined by numerous factors ranging from genetics and inactivity to exposure to toxins, air pollutants, and microbes. Even having a hot dog every day may not have an effect if the rest of the diet is low in processed foods. The obvious message is to try to reduce ultra-processed foods in the diet, but calculating how many of specific food may subtract or add to one's life expectancy, well, that is scientific hubris.
That for today is our Cup of Joe.